Hi everybody, this is Ryan at Marine Parts Source. In this video, we're gonna be talking about how to troubleshoot your fuel gauge. Uh, if it stops working, there are several different components that could be causing an issue, and we're gonna step through how to test each one. Now, for the purposes of this video, we're gonna to have to use a couple of tools. Uh, we're using a Southwire multimeter. We do sell these in case you need one. You're gonna need a multimeter or a meter of some sort uh, for the testing, and you're also gonna need a jumper wire as well. Um, we're going to be connected to a 12 volt power supply here, but the battery bank on your boat would be sufficient. Uh, we're going to be testing the gauge and the sender as well as the power supply to make sure that everything's working. So let's get started. The first step that we're going to take to troubleshoot your fuel gauge is to make sure that we are getting voltage from your power source or battery bank. So we're going to need our meter, and I've got the gauge here. I'm going to flip it over and be looking at the back side. The post that's on the right is your positive terminal, and the one in the middle is your ground terminal. So I'm simply going to uh, take the leads from our meter. I've got it set to measure voltage and I'm going to touch these to our posts and you should get 12 volts or in around that. You can see we're getting 12.8 which is exactly right. If you're not getting 12 volts then there's an issue with your battery bank or power supply or with the cables that are running to the gauge and we'll, we'll look at that in just a minute. So the next thing that we want to do is test to make sure that the gauge is functioning properly. And the way we're going to do that is by jumping the signal post to the ground. I've attached this jumper wire to do that. We've got this wire here that's normally going to be uh, connected to the sender. So we've got our jumper wire and I'm simply going to be touching this to the ground post here in the middle and we're going to see if the gauge reacts to that. And if it does, then we know we have a functioning gauge. So I'm going to flip this over and show you the face of the gauge here. And then I'm going to take my jumper wire and I'm going to touch the ground post. And if the gauge reacts, then you know it's working and you can see that it does. It moves all the way over to full. So we know the gauge is working properly. Okay, so the next thing that we want to do is test to make sure that the wire that runs from our gauge to the sender is uh, working properly. So what we're going to do is similar to what we did with the jumper wire. We're going to take this wire off of the center post of the sender and then just touch it anywhere to the metal here. It's grounded so we can touch to any spot here and just see if the gauge reacts. And we can see that the needle does move when I touch it to ground. So now we know that the sender wire or the signal wire is working properly. The final step in this process of troubleshooting your fuel gauge would be to test the sender. So at this point, we've ruled out any issues with the battery bank or the gauge or the wiring. So now we are down to the sender and identifying if that's the issue. There are two ways that you can do this. Uh, you can pull the sender out of the tank. This is probably the easier way. Um, and just move the arm of the sender and see if it causes any reaction on the gauge. You can see it is moving the needle, so we know that we have a functioning sender and we're good to go. The other way that you could do this is by pulling in your multimeter again, setting it to measure ohms, and then you can touch it to the sender to uh, see what kind of reading you get. When the gauge is at empty or when the arm is aim directly downward into the tank, you should be getting 240 ohms. At halfway, it would be at around 103 ohms. And then when you have a full tank or when the arm is at 90 degrees, then you would get 33 and a half ohms. So those are the two ways that you can test the sender to make sure that it's working properly. Really appreciate you watching this video today. I hope that it's answered some questions for you, but if you do still have some questions, please feel free to give our experts at Marine Parts Source a call. The number is 866-388-0390, or you can find us online at marinepartsource.com. 
Now, please be sure to like and subscribe to our channel. And if there are videos you'd like to see in the future, please leave those ideas in the comments below. Thanks again. Thank you.